Hey, what's up, DIYers? Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. In today's video, we're working on a Mercruiser Outdrive lower unit. We're going to show you how to install the drive shack and pinion gear the right way. Let's get started. All right, DIYers at the workstation now. And again, we are going to show you how to install the drive shaft and pinion gear in a lower unit. We have a Mercruiser. Let's get started. There is our old bearing and thrust ring that came out of our old and badly damaged bearing carrier. And there's the new bearing carrier the gear and the thrust ring. And again, this is the reverse gear. We'll install that later in the project. We need to go inside, double check how it looks, and then we will begin shifting that shift shaft to ensure that that locking mechanism is properly positioned on the shift crank. If all looks good down here, what we're going to do is we're going to come up top and we are going to rotate the shift shaft to ensure that the clutch dog inside here shifts back and forth. First thing you want to do is ensure that the propeller shaft itself is as center in the lower unit cavity as possible. Then we'll come up top and shift the shift shaft back and forth to again ensure that the clutch dog shifts back and forth. As shown here. And that is exactly how it is supposed to work. Taking a step back and making progress, what we'll do next is install the drive shaft and pinion gear. Here is our drive shaft and bearing, and there is the pinion gear, and there is the pinion gear nut and washer. Let's go ahead and open it. Pinion nut and washer have been removed from the packaging. On the left-hand side is the pinion gear. New washer again. Do not ever use your old washer. And then the pinion nut. And let's take a look at the actual nut. It has a machine groove or what's called a shoulder engravement on one side of the nut. As you can see here, if I flip it to the opposite side, there is a slight indent. However, not like this cut. This part is going to mate with the washer and face up and mate with this portion of the pinion gear. Next, I grab the pinion nut adapter tool and I've got the pinion nut and washer. I'm going to carefully slide this in place. As shown here, we are going to use the Loctite 271 thread locker on the pinion nut thread. And let's go up top and down inside the drive shaft cavity, you'll see the pinion bearing down there. I'll scroll in. You can see the needle bearings as well as the cardboard sleeve. We are going to leave that in. And as we shift the drive shaft down the cavity and inside the bearing, the actual diameter of the drive shaft will push that cardboard sleeve out. And then we will retrieve it down below and pull it out. Next, I shifted the adapter tool, pinion nut and washer aside focusing on the drive shaft bearing as well as the lower splines. I've got two 4C. I'm going to lubricate the lower splines of the drive shaft. And that is what it looks like. And I'm just going to grab a little and work it into the splines. Do not get any grease on the actual thread where the pinion nut will screw into. And again, do not overdo this. Just apply the grease to the splines, nowhere else. I'll go and cap the grease off, set that aside. We are now going to grab the SAE 90 gear lube. And again, this is the exact gear lube we put in the lower unit. So why not lubricate it with the exact gear lube that we put in the lower unit? We are going to take the cap off and we are going to lubricate the roller bearings on this drive shaft bearing. And just like the grease here, do not overdo it. I'll just apply some friendly pressure to the pump on the cork and you will see the grease come out. Again, just pick the drive shaft up and lubricate those roller bearings and that is lubricated. Coming back up top and carefully lower the drive shaft down the drive shaft cavity and it's making contact with the cardboard sleeve as well as bearing. I'm slowly allowing just the weight of the shaft to push down on that cardboard sleeve to push it out. I'll now go down below with the other hand and pull that sleeve out. Coming back down below and here is where we're at right now. You can see the lower portion of the drive shaft. What we'll do now is carefully insert the pinion gear and align it with the splines. We will need to pull up on the shaft to give the pinion gear clearance and we are not going to push the pinion gear all the way onto that lower spline area. And that's per the service manual. And here is the little cardboard sleeve. With the pinion gear in hand, as you can see here, we are going to shift it inside the lower unit cavity upside down like this. And again, we are going to carefully pull up on the drive shaft to allow this pinion gear to shift in place and align the internal splines. And just be patient. This does not happen within seconds. You have to just carefully align it. And to get better clearance, I shifted the propeller shaft to the left. 
In addition, as I shift that pinion gear down the cavity, I'm wiggling the propeller shaft and that is moving the clutch dog as well to give me more clearance to push that pinion gear into place. Coming back inside and to ensure the pinion gear splines are aligned and in place with the lower drive shaft splines, ever so slightly rotate the drive shaft and the pinion gear and forward gear should rotate. As shown here, that's all I'm going to do. Back to the pinion nut washer and tool, I'm going to apply the Loctite 271 to the pinion nut thread. And do not overdo this. As you can see, it is a red liquid. And here is a close up of it. Again, do not overdo it. As you can see, what I applied is not dripping out the bottom, which is good. We are now going to shift this adapter tool on the propeller shaft and down the cavity and onto the clutch dog. And I'm going to lubricate the inner portion of this tool because it does go over the clutch dog. And all I'm using is the same gear lube. And don't get any of this lube on the actual nut. I changed camera angles and I'm going to again shift this all the way down onto the clutch dog. I'm going to lift up on the drive shaft. The tool has now made contact with the clutch dog and just some friendly pressure to shift this into place. Coming back inside for a close up, as you can see, the adapter tool is shifted all the way on and securing that nut. And the nut has screwed a few turns onto the lower thread of the shaft. And from here, this is the top bearing race or carrier that is going to go up top on the actual bearing. Next, I've got the new bearing carrier, thrust ring, and reverse gear, and I'm going to lubricate the inner seals here. We are going to install this bearing carrier backwards, and this is going to do two things. As we talked about in previous videos, it is going to help stabilize the propeller shaft as we tighten the pinion nut on the shaft, as well as apply pressure to the tool to alleviate it from shifting off that nut. and it is in and flush with the tool. Back up top and do yourself a favor, inspect the bearing and shaft inside the cavity, make sure all looks good. We are going to grab the carrier, carefully shift that over the shaft, and do our best to align it as best we can inside the cavity over the bearing. And it rests right in place, flush with the top portion of the bearing. So if it's not going in, carefully pull it up, realign it, and allow it to drop in place. Next, we will grab the retainer, and carefully shift that over the shaft and drop it in place. Next to the retainer nut tool, carefully slide that down the shaft. Align the bottom teeth with the retainer. And you'll carefully align the retainer with the thread and screw it hand tight. And it is now hand tight. Now we need to grab the torque wrench and apply 100 pounds to the torque wrench. And we have set it to 100 pounds and zeroed it out right here, as you can see, flush with the 100 line. And we will align this connection to the tool. And we will begin screwing everything tight. And again, 100 pounds. You will know it's at 100 pounds when you have a lot of pressure and this tool makes a clicking sound. going to remove the tool and realign the actual part here to give me better leverage and tool back in place. And 100 pounds is quite a lot. There it goes, as you heard that click. I'm going to immediately remove the torque wrench. To a closer view, we are going to shift this tool off the shaft. And that's what it looks like down in there. From here, we are going to install this adapter on the very top spline. And we are going to torque the lower pinion to between 60 and 80 pounds. Back to the torque wrench. And as of right now, it is set to 60. I'm going to set it to 65. You can see one, two, three, four, five. Now it is set to 65. Coming back up top, I've got a large 32 inch socket. Rest that in place. And again, torque it to 65. And we will know it's at 65 when the torque wrench clicks. I 
I now feel the tension. There it goes. Immediately remove the torque wrench. Coming closer in DIYers, that took every bit of strength I had. Go ahead and remove this from the upper splines. Set that aside, and we are now going to carefully remove the bearing carrier from the propeller shaft. And as like everything else, just be careful as you pull the bearing carrier out, you don't want to damage anything. And again, those internal seals of the bearing carrier are hugging tight to the propeller shaft. So you may need to give it some friendly pressure or a friendly jolt. Just like that, be careful as you shift this out. You do not want to harm those inner seals. Set that aside. And from here, the internal pinion nut tool has a good grip of that clutch dog. So some friendly jolts to remove this may be required. Just like that. I'll go ahead and clean this up. Coming back inside, I wanna show you the clearance with the clutch dog, propeller shaft, and pinion gear as shown here. I'm going to also go up top and rotate the drive shaft. As you can see, the pinion nut, pinion gear, and the forward gear all move freely without binding up. I can go both ways here, as shown. And I'm going to come up top and show you the finished portion of the retainer nut, bearing, and carrier, as shown here. Everything, again, is properly torqued to factory specifications. And DIYers, that is it. Also, down below in the comment section, as well as the description section, are links to purchasing these items. Definitely check those out. From here... Do us a favor below the video, you will see the thumbs up icon, click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel, definitely ring your YouTube bell, that would be very helpful to us, we'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. Scrolling above right now is a link to a video where we pick up right where we left off. We need to install that bearing carrier.